staying on the low. You know how it go. go. They don't want to see you grow. You know how it go. These niggas do the most. You know how it go. Grind 24. You know how it go. I'm used to living a fast life on the road. I was never on the road. Student, but check my status, nigga, on the road. Everything great, a hey, nigga, on the road. They ain't see me, so they create their own views of me. I'm running into the old niggas that used to jug with me. They ain't hear from me, so they asking what's good with me. You know, you know, you know how it go. Go. Says she hate me, then she love me. You know how it go. Go. Lo 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 local life, you know how I roll. You gotta get it in, you know how it go. R.I.P. my nigga, y'all. Yeah. Watch out for them niggas that do the most, and watch out for niggas that say things as a joke. MMV fans don't listen to all them rumors. You were acting, you were not a shooter. You know how it go. 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 Niggas be hating on the low. You know how it go. They don't wanna see you grow. You know how it go. You know. These niggas do the most. You know how it go. Loco. Ron 24. You know how it go. They see me up, now they wanna get down Should've been with the get down when niggas got down So be humble, nigga sit down Was on my shit then, I'm on my shit now Ain't shit change, you know how it go shit change. Only five ten, but keep it tall, my nigga Jack to the day that I fall, my nigga Yeah, I got shit to live for, my nigga But I'm going hard, ain't no going home You know how it go, 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 go You know how it go, Jack 24 on the grind, you know how it go. Low, go. This my block, you tryna grind, you know how it go. This nigga out of line, you know how it go. You now. Jack. Be a be me will fuck it up. Me full of stamina. Be be a be me full of stamina. Stamina. Am I no gangster? Am nobody no nobody no. She no look the same after Grammy no. Uh, can't fish, you know how it go. Th th thought I had a bad bitch, you know how it go. I had a, you know. Before I sent her home, I sent her home. She still gon' get that dick, you know how it go. You know how it go. Man, I lower cut, you know how it go. 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 Niggas be hating on the low, you know how it go. They don't wanna see you grow, you know how it go. These niggas do the most, you know how it go. Grind 24, you know how it go. Yes, yes, y'all. Yes, yes, y'all. Yes, 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 y'all. And we back, y'all. And we back, y'all. Art school, the school, the school, school, y'all. <laughs> What's up, ladies and gentlemen? It's your host, your baby moms, a.k.a. the Silvers of the Surfers, a.k.a. the Multicolored Power Ranger, a.k.a. Professor X, because I handle all my business sitting down. Ow, oh, free the wave. Yo, we need you back, man. Yo, we appreciate everybody for tuning in for another wonderful episode of our school. We had a wonderful weekend. Weather was nice. A lot of us are sick now. Because we came outside with the tank tops on too early, too blood cleat early. Yo, BR Mally, you know what I'm saying? Money and violence, but you doing your own thing, local life. Yo, keep playing your music, man. Cali vibes and all that good ting and ting. Yo, S Street Media, don't forget, new Viacom, Black Viceland. Chilling here, another episode, man. And, um,. You know, was originally supposed to have Kat Melendez come up here, but she was under the weather because she wore tank tops this weekend and, and it messed her up. So we're going to, we, I just was scrambling and I was like, damn, man, um, part of this episode was more so to not just feature artists, but to, I have to start learning how to utilize my networks more. You know what I mean? Other people that are out there, entrepreneurs, you know, we're all on our, our time and we're always, you know I mean, working in schedules that, you know, is a little sporadic, you know, at times they become spontaneous or just like all over the fucking place because you know how artists are. And today, 
I was just sitting down, you know, in my cousin's studios. Shout out to my little man's young Stokes. We was using the stool, and we was just like, oh, man, we just came from McDonald's. What are we going to do? All right, let's smoke some weed. And then it was like, all right, so, damn, I got to find out who's going to come up and replace Cap. And it was a particular game on where it was like my man just hit the dagger. I mean, my man Damien just hit the dagger on OKC tonight and just bumped him. It was a tough game. You know, um, CJ, he had like 24. Yeah, had 24. yeah, CJ had 24. Yo, Kanta, 20 and 18. But, you know, like I said, this is art school, right? And we're not going to get too much. But to connect those dots, this is why my guest is here tonight. And I should have been reached out, you know, to feature the work that this man possessed because I think it's pretty cool and it's, it's you know, it's not like corny f photos of like, it seems a little bit real. Seems way, it seems way real to me. That's what I was saying. And, you know, without further ado, you know, I like to introduce a photographer, an entrepreneur, and a teacher and a colleague of mine's, you know what I'm saying, representing that MS8 gang out of Winston, I mean, you know what I mean, Weston House, you know what I'm saying, my man Joe Swindle, y'all, let's give it up. Did I say it right? Swy. Swy. Why well, I say Swindle? Oh, I'm thinking about Jessica, because she has her works up here. My man Joe Swy, so I'm going to just clap it up for him by myself, because math is normally over here, but he's over in the room being a super engineer and checking out the sounds, you know. So, like I said, an entrepreneur, right, foremost so, because... You're in New York City. You have to be an entrepreneur in New York City. And I don't mean with the A. I mean with the E, too. So, you know, and, and an educator, you know, working with some youth out of New York City, MS8, you know what I mean? We're down located over there in J Street, Metro Tech, Western House, you know, and a photographer, you know what I mean? Over, oh, a connoisseur of jerseys, athletic apparel. We have numerous conversations about jerseys and, and, and the stitching and throwback relics of, you know what I mean, Rasheed Wallace with the rose on the side of the Nike Uptown, you know? So, you know, I just wanted to, you know, just give y'all a glimpse of, you know what I mean, what this universe consists of, and that is the visuals, but it is in photography because it's like relics of history, you know, and I really appreciate that. So, you know what I mean, uh, for the people, you know, we was talking about Portland. I mean, is that the original? Is that where you first, you know what I mean, came to the world? Was it Portland? Uh, yeah, I was actually, I was born in San Francisco. Okay. And then my dad was in the army when I was real little, so we moved around a lot. And then I moved to Portland when I was like in elementary school. And then lived there till I was 18, then went to Seattle for college, and then lived, lived stayed in Seattle for a bit and actually worked making old baseball uniforms for like eight years so actually like sewing the lettering on cutting yeah. letters doing all that kind of stuff um and then yeah then came out here and ended up getting into photography okay so that's a little you know what i mean fast forward you know what i'm saying where he brings in you know uh san fran i always wanted to go to san fran you know um any memories of um you and the early San Fran days, or was like most of the memories coming out of Portland? Most of the memories coming out of Portland. We left San Francisco when I was when I was like I was real little. Mm -hmm. But uh, the biggest thing that I, that San Francisco left on me is I was named after Joe Montana. Oh snap! My <laughs> dad was a big 49er fan. I was born in San Francisco in the 80s, and mm -hmm. so uh, yeah, I got Joe Joe Montana. Oh man, that's crazy. That's uh, shout out to the 49ers out there. You know what I mean? We I thought very early on that the <coughs> besides the Cowboys I mean any teams like out there the 49ers had like the best jerseys too definitely yeah the 49ers definitely. jersey was was regal that red you know and I, I really wanted the rice I mean maybe not the Montana because uh, I just wanted the rice I love wide receivers in it during that time you know so most of this this the storyline is coming out of Portland we can say pretty much, right? Yeah. Um, any particular part of Portland? Because West, well, the West is different. New Yorkers, we're always thinking, like, 
we hear anything, unless it's like California, we always think it's like the whole state. You know what I mean? So like Oregon, it's like, all right, cool, Portland. Like we don't, you know what I mean? Like it's no, nothing else. You know what I mean? You know how it's like New York and it's like Brooklyn, Queens and all this. It's like, was it a particular spot in Portland that you was raised in? Uh, so I grew up in Southwest Portland. Um, but yeah, I mean, Portland kind of is like, once you, it's, I think it's fair to probably look at Oregon and just be like, yeah, Portland. <laughs> it's all kind of one thing. Portland's like, it's, it's, um, yeah, it's like, it's kind of split west and east. They're a little bit different, but it's pretty much the same. But yeah, I'm, I was, grew up in Southwest. There was uh, any moments where you started to collect these thoughts or collect ways to be m artistic what, early on? or did, did you? Nah, not really. Like, it probably came more... Um, so yeah, like I said, I went, I was in, I lived in Seattle for a long time before coming here. And, uh, when I was doing the work, like making, you know, at the, so there's a small company called Ebbis Field Flannels and they do like 1950s baseball uniforms. So it's like old minor league teams, old Cuban teams, old Negro league teams, mm -hmm. old like independent teams. Mm -hmm. Um, and so like, I think doing that and kind of like being in in that in the world kind of around that um got me a little more exposed i guess to like seeing people that were like photographers or doing different like kind of creative things and then thinking like yeah i could maybe start to start to do some of this are there any mentors coming out of ebbis field because uh, you know and shout outs to all my g's out in the field of flatbush Yo, already know what time it is. The rakes are up over here, cuz. Yo, Ebbisfield Apparel? <laughs> that was the name? Ebbisfield Flannels. Okay. <coughs> Flannels, yeah. Was there any mentors or anybody that was, like, showing you, like, the way going through? Like, how did you get that job, anyway? Um, I remember, so, like, when I was a little kid in Portland, we used to go up maybe once or twice a year. My dad would take me up to the Kingdom to see, like, Griffey play mm. in the 90s, and... Uh, Ebbets Field at that time, they started in like eight late 80s, early 90s, and then like picked up some steam in like the early 90s. Like they have um, the Spike Lee movie, uh, the the Doodle. jazz the jazz one. What was that one? Mo Better Blues. Mo Better Blues. Yeah. So Thanks, there's, man. there's a scene at the end where he's wearing the the, the He's wearing the Pittsburgh Crawfords jersey, like yeah. playing catch with his son. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So Ebbets did stuff. Um, they ended like kind of Spike Lee ended up using their stuff in his movies and they got mm. kind of picked up in like kind of the like creative scene, I guess, in like the early nineties. So that got them some juice. And then, so anyway, they had a store that was right across the street from the kingdom. And so every time when we would go, my dad would take me in there before the, before, after the game. And we would like look at the old, like San Francisco seals uniforms or Kansas city Monarch stuff and got into the history that way. Mm. And then when I finished, college i didn't really know what i wanted to do and i was like i wonder maybe i could just get a job here and it worked out well so what did you take up in college was there anything artistic at all no nah, i did political science yeah you know what i'm saying um shout out to everybody that went to college and actually isn't into what they're doing in college but some some way somehow working within that field because i went to school for public administration i actually first started going to school for communications and then i was like nah and then i thought i was gonna be a a basketball player, man. That gives me. Yeah, but then it was um, public administration. Shout outs to Mega Evers and everybody out there that helped me, you know what I mean, obtain that, you know what I mean, corny ass degree in public administration. But I, I realized that it helped me so much in like speaking in public, you know, like I have no problem with doing that, you know, so I guess I'm here, you know what I'm saying? S Street Media, Art School, and all the other things that I get into. Uh, do you think that political science helped you in any way artistically? Um, now, I mean, I think not necessarily like super directly, but definitely like I think it. Like I think that so I didn't really start pursuing photography seriously till like 2015. So mm. I was like 26, mm. and I think coming to it a little later gave me like a little different perspective. Like. Yeah, it just gave me a different perspective on, on the world and stuff that I was interested in. And I think, so I think, like, college probably helped in that way. Yeah, because I look at your work and, you know what I mean, I see you, you catch a lot of surreal shots. You, you, well, you catch a lot of sh scenes that just seems like, 
you're in this neighborhood, you know, I don't know. It just makes me feel like somehow it's like a science to it. Do you apply any of like your college work to to the way that you shoot now? Because I don't, I don't know. It's just where I, I feel. I get a lot of. I don't have the word play for it right now because I math didn't roll up no bud yet. But I, was, I don't know. Um. Yeah, I think that it definitely. I think. I the the work that I think is most interesting is like work that's kind of like it has like a art like a fine art kind of style to it but then also like it's not in a studio like you're out yeah. getting into something that has maybe some type of weight to it yeah. but then you're approaching it with this like art sensibility and I think yeah so I, I guess I think like political science and study and that kind of stuff probably helps as, as far as like maybe like informing the type of stuff that I end up getting it because I that makes me think about the world in a certain way. Then I'm like, well, how would I express this through like what would I want to take pictures of? Yeah, that's cool. I, I see that a lot, man. You know, what I mean, you travel a lot, been all over the world. You know what I'm saying? <coughs> <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> it's this weather. I got I wore tank tops all day yesterday and um, see my director today. And uh, yeah, please. I see my director today. And um, Rite Aid, I was getting some Mucinex. That was mad funny. We was talking about this earlier, you know. So uh, early on, San Fran, the Seattle's, you know what I mean? Well, the Portland, you know, then you, up, you go into the college realm, you know what I mean, and things like that. Did you attend any, like, art? Or was it, like, strictly, like, political science, you know what I mean? Uh, did I do any art in college? I took a film class in college. Mm. So, yeah. Mm. I mean, that kind of like, yeah. That's pretty cool. I mean, hey, it happens like that. I appreciate you, good brother. Um, I think about it a lot, too. And, you know, it's like the networks. And I guess this is where, well, this is what this episode truly means. It's like utilizing those networks because, I never really was too much into the arts within my school itself either. I was always like outside doing it, you know what I mean? Like checking out this venue or trying to get with these people that are into this because I didn't see that too much in my school, you know what I mean? It's just like African American art, yeah, from 1901. <laughs> <coughs> Thanks. I want I want to talk about that. I appreciate you for reminding me about some bullshit from back in the days. I don't know. But you know how that go. So now you're moving into that, right? You're doing your thing. Not too much of the, you know, arts in that world, but that's cool. When was, like, the sp when did you get that, that niche that you said, hey, man, I want to, you know what I mean, start working with some photography? So probably, like, at the end of the time that I was living in Seattle, I was – um, like thinking I would maybe want to try to leave the job at, at Ebbets, uh, the job making jerseys. And I was thinking at first maybe I'd want to do like my own like clothing thing because I now had that kind of knowledge. But then I was like, I'd always been really interested in writing. And so I first started trying to get into writing and then, and that like, and doing like kind of like magazine style writing. And then ended up coming to New York, actually go to to go to school for journalism. Mm, that's interesting. Did I mention that in the beginning? Nah. Uh, yeah, so creative writing as well. I watched, and it's, you know, we're fairly new to what we're doing at MS8, and I watched you, you know what I mean, try to implement that creative write, writing process to the students, you know what I mean, today. You know, how, how much of a struggle or how much joy do you actually get from creative writing? I mean, is that like what you were really wanted to do? Nah, I don't like writing that much. So I, I liked writing. So I came to writing because I liked the idea of doing stories and like it give you a reason to go out in the world and like get in, like get deep into the stuff that I would be interested in mm. and then come back and write about it. Mm. But I think once I realized that I could do that with photography where I could just go out, take pictures of things that I'm interested in, end up spending more time in those things to get enough pictures, and then I didn't have to do the part where I have to sit at a desk and write for hours. Oh. So, like, that was probably how in, in, in journalism school that, like, once I started taking photo classes, I was like, oh, this is way – Yeah. It just suits my personality more. Mm, so you're more of a sh 
You know what I mean? Cha ching. Catch that. Then, yeah. Yeah, me too. I can't say that that's for too long. That bothers me. That bothers the shit out of me, and I'm not with it, you know? So, what was the first thing that you actually shot? The first, like, um, the first, I mean, I shot, I had shot some pictures for, like, written stories that I was doing. The first thing that I was, like, I'm going to do this as, like, a photo project mm. was um, I had, like, a month break from school, and I had, like, a, I was on, like, student loans, so I had, like, a little bit of money from that, and I went, um, I went to Cuba for a month in 2000, like January 2015 with the, like an old film camera that I had and I wanted to go shoot mm. all the different ballparks of the baseball teams that were playing there. Yeah. Um, and so, yeah, that was kind of the first thing that I did. Man, shout out to Cuba, man. I was out there in 2017. Yeah, it was pretty cool. You know what I mean? Um, r some historic shit out there. You know what I mean? And realize that's, that's how gas actually looks. <laughs> I'm just saying. It was mad funny because I was seeing like this guy pouring gas into his car and it was like this real mucky looking coffee-ish color. I'm like, damn, y'all got the original gas. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, <laughs> <coughs> yo, it was crazy. You know what I mean? Cuba is definitely a hot spot right now. Everybody's going there. You know, you see a lot of stuff. Working with that, and I'm just listening to it. You're going to Cuba to shoot the baseball fields growing up as a baseball fan like how was that how was that feeling uh i mean it was cool it was it was like i think you know you it's, there's it's i probably had like a very like romantic view of like cuban baseball so and it was just cool going there and i think the biggest thing was like just trying to get you end up in all these little towns that like aren't really tourist areas that i wouldn't have otherwise gone and mm -hmm. then so like you're on you know take kind of just navigating around these small towns in like the middle of the country and uh yeah you end up like seeing just like a whole different side of Cuba that I think made me like way more interested yeah I was definitely like that too when I went out there I was definitely like I want to see the I want to see like the non-tourist tourist shit like you know what I mean I actually got the chance to check out some of those baseball fields did you have a favorite that you that you um, remember yeah so there's like uh, Isla de la Juventud is like a small island that's separate from the rest of the country. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's it's actually like one of the bigger islands in the Caribbean, but there's not that many people that live on it. And like they, the small town there has a baseball team. And like to get there, you got to take this like five hour ferry and it's like a whole process. And then the the, the ballpark is, is mad small, but like it's you can it's you can kind of like you make friends with the guy who runs it and, you can, and then you can just kind of like walk wherever you want like be in the dugout with the players there's yeah. like the guy who's like the team is the pirates so there's like a guy in town who comes around like dressed like a pirate mm. and like um yeah it was just a that, i think that that was probably my favorite one favorite major league baseball team today uh i grew up a giants fan so i'll stick with the giants i, but I also like the mariners being from the northwest i uh, hear that man shout out to the mariners baby you know I, I love that uh i was thinking about that but then i was like nah man let me stop playing i'm a fucking yankee i'm a fucking yankee and i gotta represent my fucking yankees my shorty loves the mets i'm like yeah whatever but you know what i mean we that's that's just like a interior thing we'll Shout outs to you, baby. Happy birthday. On another note, so now you're doing your photography, you you're traveling abroad, you know what I mean, you rocking. I mean, how I mean, are you are you feeling it? You know what I mean? You feel like this is what I wanna do for the rest of my life or this is you know Yeah, I think as soon as um as soon as I was like shooting the games in Cuba, like probably the first game even, I was just like you know, just setting up the camera and getting on there and starting shooting was like, oh yeah, like this is, it's just so much fun. I was like, yeah, this is, this is going to be the rest of my life is yeah. this. Yeah, that's, that, that, I, I was, I was going to ask that question that way or something like, oh, what, what was that moment that was like, yeah, I'm doing this for the rest of my life, you know? So it's the Cuba trip. I hear you. You was out there. Mm-hmm. I feel you, bro. You was out there getting strange for some change with them, with them Cuban things. Cuba is lovely. You know what I mean? Their water sucks, though. That shit is so salty, it just, just fucked me up. You know what I mean? I was on the toilet for like eight days fucking with that salty-ass water. But hey, man, it is what it is. I ain't got, 
I love you. I'm coming back soon. Hopefully, we can get a show going on out there. So we're here with Joe Swad. You know what I'm saying? I said it right this time. S Street Media, don't forget, you know what I mean? The new Viacom, the Black Vice Land, you know what I mean? Gangland activities. Yo, shout out to my sister too. Zippy, happy birthday. You know what I'm saying? She out in Miami right now getting toasty. Uh, my sh Pharrell, she's looking real toasty out there doing her thing. You know what I'm saying? Bring some of that stickity stink back, you know what I'm saying? We feel you. Yo, you reading anything right now? Um... I just recently read, so I finished a book like a couple weeks ago and I need to get a new book. Um, I read Beasts of No Nation. It's like a, the, they ended up making a movie on Netflix with Idris Elba about like a kid who's like a child soldier in Africa. Yeah, and, yeah, yeah, yeah. And so the book, um, yeah, the book was good. Okay. You know yeah. what I'm saying? So yeah. yo, for all y'all that's reading, you know what I'm saying? In this university of art school, you know what I'm saying? Today is Sunday April 14th, 2019, you know what I'm saying? And we got some wonderful artists that we love to feature. I'm so happy for having you up here, you know, just being able to chime in so fast. I called about 15, 20 artists, you know what I mean, that just like, and it was this whole bunch of scheduled conflicts and restraints and all this other stuff, and I'm just like, damn. You know what I mean? Like, why don't I just do this? And I'm actually trying to get Miss Myra to come up here, too. She's another educator of ours. You know what I mean? She has real seductive fashion. You know what I mean? She's kind of, you know what I mean? She's spicy. She's real spicy. And I'm really happy to have more photography, well, more artists who, who practice that photography, who's in the field of photography, to come up and talk a little bit more about their work, you know? What was the first camera that you actually shot with? Uh, so the camera that I had on that f the f that like first thing that I w when I went to Cuba was like an old Nikon film, like SLR. I think it was like an, I don't remember the Nikon F something. I don't know the. Mm. Is there? If you had the if someone came up to you with the bag right now and they said, you know what, Ching, here's this bag. What camera are you looking for to shoot with? I don't know. Actually, the camera that I have right now is, like, I don't think that I would want another camera. I mean, like, there's maybe other little cameras that I would like as, like, kind of, like, little side things. But my main, my my wife as a camera is the camera that I have right That's now. That's the one you show showing with at school? Yeah, the big one. Yo, so, I don't know, like, for real, because it's crazy, because I watch how the kids react towards, like, being with a camera, using a camera that... It's huge, first of all. It's not like your handheld. It's not your phone. It's like the real movie shoot. Like, I have to put the shield over my head and just to see how calm and poised they are because they feel like they're handling something historic, you know? What got you into... And what is the name of that actual camera? Um, so the type of camera is a large format film camera. So mm -hmm. it shoots like four by five like sheet film mm -hmm. um the one i have is made by toyo which is like a japanese brand mm -hmm. um those cameras themselves aren't super expensive like they're cheaper than like nice digital cameras but like the film is expensive yeah. so it's like you got to be like mad judici judicious about like how many pictures you take yeah because i seen a film and it was probably about like this like probably like like this this big yeah it's four inches by five inches yeah it so it's like sheet. this yeah. so for everybody that's on the camera you know, your picture's looking like a little bit like this, and like you s put it through a slot when you're done. It's the yeah. real deal. And watching these kids use it, you know, we was playing ball the other day. Uh, shout out to my other mans, my other uh, educator, Mr. Keith. We smacked the kid. We spanked y'all, boy. Stop playing with us. I think because we older that we don't got no. 45 to 7. Two versus seven. We beat the brakes off of all these kids that be talking crap. Because that's all they do all day. They talk crap against us. Talk about we can't do this. We can't do that. We old. We don't know what's going on and all this. And I'm watching the, the students take shots of that. Like, and, you know what I mean, India and everybody's just like under there. And it's just like, no, watch it. You know what I mean? Like, they're real cautious, man. And you're bringing another element of photography to these children which is very important and i love that and it makes it almost seem like they're shooting a movie 
You know, have you heard like, or when you're out and about and you're using your camera, do you, what type of response do you get from like from the young to the old? Yeah, I mean that's probably one of the coolest things about using that camera is like the response you get. Is the response you get is like just completely different than when I'm using like the the digital camera. People, and especially like if you're out in the street with that shooting, like people will kind of think that you're doing something like a little like being sneaky or yeah, like yeah, they're yeah. they're not really feeling you. But when you come out with this like ridiculous looking camera from uh you know that like was the kind of camera people were using at like 1900 yeah. people just respond to it differently like no matter where you are like when i've taken it on trips like outside the country people just like very quickly or like will bring you into their house and you set up a shot there or like even the pol like places where like in cuba for example the police when i'm shooting with my digital camera certain places they're a little like yeah, apprehensive they're like who are you are you a journalist whereas when they see me with this like ridiculous looking camera they're kind of just like i don't even know what that guy's doing but i'm just gonna let him <laughs> do his thing fire and I, I that's what i'm saying too there's another guy that shoots he shoots in soho i forgot his name but he he uses that camera a lot you know what i mean so shout out to you <coughs> excuse me for bringing back that history Dun -dun -dun -dun. you know what i'm saying shout out to talib and most dev yo another episode we're continuing on Got my man Joe Swab with me, you know what I'm saying? MS King, you know what I'm saying? Y'all already know. MS8, we love you, baby. You know what I'm saying? We're going to get them checks right, too. Stop playing. Yo, S Street Media, we're here. You know what I'm saying? It's your host, your baby moms. Y'all already know all the other acronyms. I have the best playlist on S Street Media and probably in the whole entire world. God damn it. Yo, peep this. 250,000 on my neck. You already see it. I had the floss on y'all today. You know what I'm saying? I told my kids. I was like, you don't know what type of chains these are. You know what I'm saying? But, yo, we're going to go into another uh, commercial, play some more music, get into more of what Joe is doing later on and all that. You know what I'm saying? Don't forget, man. Gang, man. Don't forget. Follow us at Street Media. You know what I'm saying? We here. Want it all. Come on. I'm fascinated by it all. Fly shit, money, clothes, and diamonds. Multiple whips and cribs. Extended clips, niggas with big dicks. Reaper imported, we all want it. To make a fortune, a few mil, I'm talking. Spit that shit, record it, cook them bricks, deport them. Eager to afford it all. Cause I'm used to not having shit. Fuck with me, what I'm after. No less than six digits. Big business, what you think this is? In it for the grand pool, but would have had it much sooner. But loyalty is thin, and attention is thick. When drama's lit, settle it. All black, full metal shit. Send them with them devils when I'm heaven sent. I want it all and become a little arrogant. I need my clothes tailored and I need to be catered. Yeah. Hey, I want it all. The bands, the plays. To get in that money in different ways To wallin' on all in on different days The cribs, yeah. the cars The envy from your favorite stars All types of paper from Paris to Mars Doing what I feel just like God No more Mrs. Nice God No ribbons in the sky There's no reasons why I can't stack money feeling high Build business, the Lord is my witness. I'm on the road to riches, yeah. Reminiscing of our dreams and wishes. Went from free lunch and meal tickets to the four seasons on any given. No reasons but in Vegas every weekend. Living what we've been dreaming. We fucking survivors. From the way they describe us. Criminal minded, blinded by these project environments. Now we make profits, banking our pockets. We wanted every chance we get. But we never get spent Went from being shipped in chains We stay dripped in chains Pushing rovers on an open range I want it all including balance and change Ambition and gains Live it out until the end of my days
I want it all too, god damn it. We're back. Another episode of Art School. You feel me? It's your host, your baby moms, a.k.a. the Silverest of the Surfers, a.k.a. the Multicolored Power Ranger, a.k.a. Professor X, because I handle all my business sitting down. And, yo, we're here at Street Media. We got my boy Joe Swart in the building, you know what I'm saying? Representing at Portland, Oregon. But he's out here in New York City doing his motherfucking thing. Yo, we was talking about your camera and how you got the old cowboy western looking flow and all like that, you know what I'm saying, the one that goes poof and the reaction that you get from it, how, you know, you it's pleasure. You you, you feel safe. Could you Would you say that about using that camera? You know, I mean, in today's way of shooting, because TMZ has like polluted our minds with, yo, anytime you take a camera out, people just automatically think something is sus. You know what I mean? I'm not gonna yo, it's crazy because it's like you don't know nowadays, you know what I mean? How 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 are you getting through with today's, you know what I mean? I don't know. I'm looking for the word. I really wish I had like the Stephen A. Smith big ass word during the conversation that he uses to be able to uh talk about how today when people are shooting or using their cameras, you know what I mean, how much negative response they get from it not to draw you into a negative place but like how how are you shooting and how comfortable do you feel shooting today um i feel so like I, yeah like i was saying i think that's kind of the biggest reason that i like that camera is it just like because cameras are so common now and like people are so used to being photographed and also used to like kind of being like don't take pictures of me mm -hmm. that having a camera that like right off the bat people are like how does this work it's just, it's a really easy way to like break down quickly that wall and then I can like get the pictures that I think are going to be more interesting. Mm. Back to the jerseys. What was your favorite, well, your top three jerseys of all time? Ooh, my top three jerseys of all time. Um, I mean, just so being from Portland, like the, the 90s blazers, like before when the font had the kind of weird shadow to it. And mm. um, and they, it was they had it was, they wore blazers on the black ones on the road. Like, yeah, the Rashid Wallace Sabonis road Ooh. blazers definitely in the top five mm. um, from like the job that I used to do. My favorite of like old jerseys. One of them was. Um, the Centur Centurce Cangrejeros is like a Puerto Rican team that Roberto Clemente played for with Willie Mays. Like they both played on the same team in Puerto Rico for a summer. Wow, that's crazy. And Never like the that. jersey looks kind of like a Dodgers jersey, but with like a couple crabs like sitting on a bat. Oh, what? Because they're the crabbers. Oh. Um, so, yeah, that also will be up there. And then, I don't know, like football. Yeah, probably maybe the 80s 49ers. Mm, those are yeah. se that second one, though. Willie Mays and Roberto yeah. Clemente played on the same team. Yeah. That's fucking nuts. I never heard that one before. That's, yo, shout outs to you for that information, man. Yeah. Not the, not no, like, in Puerto Rico. In, Puerto in Rico. like, in the <laughs> Winter League. Yeah, that's, that's, that's crazy. I would have loved to have that jersey. Like, shit, that would have killed that. Uh, favorite camera. I mean, besides the one, do you have another one in your arsenal that you use? Yeah, so um, my grandfather actually was, like, super into photography. and uh, Oh, so it's in the blood. It's in the blood. So oh, he, shit. He, he passed away when I was in high school, but he, we, we had his camera. So actually, like, one of, the, um, one of the lenses that I took with me on that first, the first project that I did, like, that was his lens. And then also, like, I... I have an old, like, film, just simple, like, point-and-shoot film camera that actually the kids use at school, too. It's the one that they take the point. Like, that's my grandpa's, my grandpa's camera that he gave me. Oh, man. Did you, did you ever tell him that? What? That that was the lens that your grandfather used. Nah. I think they might take it a little bit more serious after that. <laughs> Word. That's it. So it's in the blood. That's part of the lineage. Oh, yeah. okay. So, okay. So you were the guy in the, um, in the kingdom back in the days that was taking pictures. Oh, all right, cool. I was, my family was the ones that was writing, and then you come in and take the pictures. Yeah, I feel you. I understood. So, <coughs> excuse me, because it's the weather and all that, and the mucinex and all that other stuff. So, you are now teaching photography. How's that going for you? Uh, it's been cool. I mean, it's been 
I've been really impressed at the kids work so far. I think that's like, I mean, I don't know how it's been for you, but definitely like seeing like, especially seeing some of the kids like gravitate to the camera and then take a little bit of like pride and being like, I'm a, I'm like the photographer. Here. Like, you know, you see like the, the kids at school who, are, who have gotten like nice with the camera than the other kids or the other teachers will like seek them out to take pictures. And yeah, yeah, yeah. you can see they, they're like puffing their chests out a little bit. Yeah. Um, so that's been cool. And then also, yeah, just like seeing their work, especially the work that they've shot with the big camera, like. Some of those pictures are like, yeah, like mad inspired. Yo, what time we gotta go to? Oh yes, um, is is it uh holiday? Is holiday it? season. Hey, the fifteenth. Oh shit, these kids are on break. God damn, you know how that go. But besides that, now you you're teaching. Did you think that you would be doing this six years ago? Um, I think once I kind of started getting into photography as like a career path and seeing like the ways in which you got to like the ways in which people make that work financially, I kind of thought that teaching would be like that seemed like the most appealing way to do something photography related that would help me pay my bills. Awesome. Awesome. How's New York been treating you with the photography? Have it's you been getting like middle fingers when you shoot and stuff or has it been... Been nah, it's been chill. Yeah, yeah man, because normally they'd be like, fuck you, hey, get out, get out of here, get out, hey, you jackass, what are you doing? You'd be like, I'm just taking a picture, bro. You'd be like, oh, all right, I thought you was doing something else, you know what I mean? So it's pretty, you've been getting some warm receptions from New Yorkers, man. New York, y'all know how y'all be giving it up. Y'all, y'all rude. New Yorkers are fucking rude. Yeah. Any distinct uh, changes that you've seen from yourself and your photography from then to now? Um, yeah, probably like, just like this, uh, maybe this, the, um, like ha trusting myself to maybe be a little more like, like art, artsy or like abstract with the type of pictures that I might take whereas before I might have been a little like uh like I need it needs to be something that's like really like mm -hmm. obvious of like what it, you know mm -hmm. I don't know like take a picture of a nice picture of a person or like a you go shoot a game do something like that whereas now it's like I'm trying to find like yeah like weirder stuff that yeah a niche a or niche. not not just a niche you just you know just sometimes vanity could get a little bit boring you know what I mean? And you're taking pictures of people all the goddamn time, and people will just start getting on your nerves. You know what I mean? So, you know, it's like, fuck that. I don't want to take a picture of your nose. You know what I'm saying? It's, it's annoying, you know? Or, you know, cars and stuff. And it's like, all right, I, I done caught a shot of this Ferrari 258 already from Lil Uzi. You know what I'm saying? I want to do a, I don't want to do cars anymore. I want to do planes. Uh, what color belt? do you think that you have in the art dojo um i don't know what's like the what's the order like everybody always says that where's everybody yellow always where's, says i feel like where's yellow at in the that's order that's like in the beginning what's like in the middle like the, purple yeah purple i'll take purple i like i like purple purple yeah that's cool man that's cool did you uh, expect to be doing this 10 years ago? Nah, definitely. Like 10 years ago? Nah. No. Nah. Definitely not. Never mm -hmm. would have guessed. No, oh, nah. Not at all. Me either. I probably would. Yeah, I wasn't thinking about this 10 years ago. Not like this, this, but I was thinking about it. You know? So, as we move on, right, we are uh, continuing to talk a little bit more about the photography of Joe Swide and his lineage, you know what I'm saying, finding out that his dad, I mean, his grandfather, or his dad's dad, was a photographer, right? Did he show you anything in particular early about photography? No, nah, never, actually. Like, he always had a camera around and took really nice pictures, and, like, I probably, like, appreciated looking at pictures, but at nine, he never really, like, put me on to... Oh, man. He putting you on now. He like, God damn it, you're yeah. going to be doing this, you know? Uh, favorite color? Purple. Purple. Yeah, that's why you chose purple belt. Everybody chooses. Everybody that says purple normally says purple belt. You know what I'm saying? There's, that's that's just what it is. So you representing the West. You're now on the East Coast. You're doing your thing as an educator. 
You know what I mean? What's in store? I know we got something coming up soon. You know what I mean? Um, hopefully, you know, we could make it a little bit bigger than what it is because I like to utilize my networks. But myself and Mr. Joe will be putting together an art show for our kids. You know what I mean? At MS8 and Western House. You know what I'm saying? We hopefully could get some people to come down there to purchase some work and say, what's up? You know what I'm saying? From these young entrepreneurs, you know? What else? You know what I mean? Is in the workings. Um, I've, so I'm trying to get more into like film and video stuff. So I have something right now that I shot that I'm trying to edit so I can get it out. But mm. it's taking a long time to edit. It's editing is tedious work, but. Like color. What's that? No, I'm saying with the edits, like coloring, you know what I mean? And things like that. Or it's just straight film. Like this is like a movie. Yeah, it's like a, oh, it's okay. like a short doc. That oh, I'm, yeah? Yeah, that I'm like trying to cut together. Okay, and what is it about? So um, last September, I went to Mississippi to film a world title match in Checkers that was between this dude from Italy and this dude from, like, a township in South Africa. Both flew to this rural, this, like, insane Checkers house in rural Mississippi <laughs> to spend a week in the basement competing for the world championship. And uh, so I was there living in the basement with them for the week and, like, filming the whole thing. And it was just, yeah, it was very weird. Hold on. So the World Checkers Tournament yeah, is was in Mississippi. Yeah. And the two competing, one was from South Africa. Yeah, so the, the, it's in Mississippi because in this town, Petal, Mississippi, there's this guy who built the the International Checker Hall of Fame in his house. So he has this, like, just, you know, very bizarre, old, like, Mississippi, like, estate. And then he was a Checkers fanatic. He's this, like, e weird, like, evangelical guy who's now, like, in his 80s. He went to prison for, like, s six or seven years for money laundering in the early 2000s. While he was in prison, the Checker Hall burnt to the ground. There were, like, Checker books from the 13th century that were, like, destroyed. He got out of prison, set to work on, like, rebuilding the checker hall while, like, living in a trailer in the yard. Uh, eventually, like, reopened it. And then this was the first title match that he had held there since, like, since the fire and he was in prison. And so the reigning champ was this guy from Italy who, I guess, like, checkers, I guess, is, like, pretty well supported in Italy. <coughs> I don't know. But this dude from Italy who – though who almost who was basically going to retire from checkers because he was so severely depressed he was like on all these medications that were like really messing with his mind so he couldn't play at a high level anymore but it was always his dream to play at the checker hall of fame in mississippi what so he came to mississippi and then challenging him is this guy um from uh new brighton township in south africa who like just you know got into checkers became like was this sort of like brilliant checker player and then uh, even though, like, in South Africa, there's very little support for it. And then he – so the checker community in the U.S., they, like, sponsored him to, to like, come out and play in, in tournaments. And so they flew him out for this title match. And then so the, these two guys, there was – in the house was the – so the owner of the house and his wife, and then the two competitors – and then each of them, like, one other Italian guy came to, like, look after his friend who was in bad health. And then this other dude who was, like, a 70-year-old computer programmer from Montana drove three days to watch. And, we, like, we interviewed him, and he was on some, like, this is a highlight of my life to be here and see this. Like, these, he's, like, if you're a fan, you want to see your heroes, and, like, these are, like, two of the greats of all time. And, like, this in this just empty kind of, like, depressing insane house for like it's a giant house like the upstairs alone is like this huge like church hall with like flags and there's like giant marlin on the wall and we'd just be sitting in the corner eating like mcdonald's burritos every morning and like dead silence it was it was a very bugged out week why the fuck we wasn't there i want to see, see that yeah. i want to see a documentary on chess uh, what checkers? Excuse me, checkers, right? Because I think I'm the shit in checkers, low key. Yeah, uh, I saw you at the checkers. The, yeah, man, yeah. I love checkers, man. Checkers is pretty cool, man. I find so many different ways. I was looking at a video not too long ago with Maximus and how he spanked this dude.
with 20 mon- 21 moves in chess. And I was just like, damn, man, I, w- I want to um, spank somebody in checkers in 21 moves. You know what I'm saying? So shout out to all the checker players out there. You know what I'm saying? Shout out to Mr. Joe for actually sitting in the house. You know what I mean? And documenting the World Series of Checkers. You know what I'm saying? It, and it's in Mississippi of all places. Like, I wouldn't have thought Mississippi yeah. at all. I wouldn't have said, like, what the fuck is... Yeah, I guess it was, like, the history of checkers in the U.S. is it's, like... Started in Mississippi? It was just, like, a lot of, like, r- rural south kind of church kind of, like... Yeah, it's It just makes sense now because I thought about it. If I was... Yeah, I didn't start playing checkers until I was in, like, vacation Bible school or something like that or some shit. Or, like, PAL. Or um, not even PAL. What's the other one? What's the one from the hood? Yogi Bear. Yeah, so shout out to all my Yogi Bear vacation Bible school. You know what I'm saying? PAL kids in New York City represent for all the checker plays across, across the world. You know what I'm saying? So, the documentary, anything else? Um, That's that's probably the main thing that I have that I'm that's just like been hanging over me for months. Oh, but lesson plans and lesson plans, yeah. yeah. And then just trying to like find stuff to shoot day to day, like around the city. Any photographers that you are looking at or you're inspired by or have been inspired by? Um, hmm. I like. Uh, I mean, there's yeah, there's a guy like Christopher Anderson who's like a He's like a famous like documentary photographer. His stuff is cool. There's also like a woman, Deanna Lawson, who shoots a lot. She also uses like a large format camera and she makes these like really crazy portraits mm. that I like. But that's pretty cool. Yeah. You know what I mean? I'm all for it. I'm all for photography. I'm all for representing for the university of art school. Part of me for yawning, part of me for coughing. It's been a tr- this this the weekend has been full speed ahead, you know what I'm saying? I'm happy to get back to, you know what I mean, sleep and hopefully get some people to check us out, you know what I mean, here on S Street Media, you know what I'm saying? You can hashtag S Street Media. Don't forget, you can always check us out every Sunday, you know what I'm saying? We here with the gang. We're going to be posting up some videos. Yo, subscribe to the YouTube channel. Yo, don't forget, August 25th, we are at... Joe's, uh, well, we at the five spot. April 25th. Yeah, April 25th. Yeah, five, five spot, you know what I'm saying? The Vandal Hour, we're going to be up there. We're going to be doing live, live broadcasting, streaming live, you know what I'm saying? That's what we do. Yo, shout out to everybody that's been tuning in, checking us out. Oh, Hops is coming through? All right, smooth, man. Shout out to my boy, man. You killing out there, brethren, you know what I mean? Big up, you know? So, we're going to be doing that. Don't forget, you know what I mean? All love is great love. We love you. Thanks for all your support. I want to thank you, Mr. Joe, for coming through in such short notice, for real. Because if it wasn't for us clicking on that Portland Gate, I would have just brushed past anybody. I mean, prob- I don't know. It, it's hard. And sometimes I think that's where this circles back around, where you're utilizing your networks. You know what I'm saying? And making sure that... You reach out to everyone that's, you know what I mean, you can and much as possible, you know what I mean? And some of your coworkers can be cool. I know some of you guys <laughs> don't like your coworkers and stuff like that. But I think we immediately click through just the admiration of sports apparel and the visuals, you know what I'm saying? A lot of, definitely. Yes, yeah, a lot of us don't really be fucking with the visuals, you know what I mean? So. We're going to be here next week once again. I'm going to bring you another. I ain't going to say who it is this time because motherfuckers be flopping up, be getting sick and all that other stuff. I might be sick. My shorty might be sick and she don't want me to go nowhere. Math might be sick. I don't know. Whoever, whatever the case may be, we want to thank you. What's today? The 14th again? April 14th, 2019. You know what I'm saying? We here at Street Media. It's your host. You can follow me at almighty underscore math. Where can they catch you? Uh, Joe underscore Swide. And uh, any other, any other uh, places you want? To, you want to send me an email, or something? Uh, yeah, I mean you can check out my website too, josephswide.com. Fire. Yeah. Yeah, that's dope. You know what I'm saying? And shout out to all the youth out there, man. We love y'all, man. That's what we doing. You know, yo, I got the best playlist 
I keep saying that shit. You know what I'm saying? Be all, yo, send us some new music, bro. You know what I'm saying? You know how it go. You been out of California in the face. You know what I'm saying? Yo, S Street Media Gang. You know what I'm saying? Everybody else is tuning in. We love you. God bless. And we out of here. Oh. <coughs> Smoking your chest like a bong head, real strong shit, y'all. Getting long kissed on the song, bitch. Or you'll feel the smoke in your chest like a bong head. Real strong shit, y'all can pass it around. I pull a real long fifth and blast it a clown. Come on, grease ball greasy. I'm the baddest dog on it. I'm a dick, take a beat and rub my balls on it. Act like y'all want it. You can, in fact, have it. You'll disappear. No tricks. I spit black magic. Ah, damn right, it's that tragic. I'm a breath of fresh air. Rap made y'all asthmatics. Breathe like fab, y'all sounding all wheezy. I'm a grease ball dog. I keep it all greasy. The rootiness, sootiness, roughness, toughness. Big birds like you get snuffle up again. Mind your bees wax for I have to biz nuts your shit. One man boot ain't playing nothing to fuck with, bitch. I ain't nothing to up with. Grease ball, man, I ain't nothing to up with. I'm a grease ball, man, I ain't nothing to up with. Grease ball, man, I ain't nothing to up with. Yo, I ain't nothing to up with. Grease ball, man, I ain't nothing to up with. Grease ball, man, I ain't nothing to up with. I'm a grease ball, man, I ain't Flow fresh like it's kept in zip lock. Wow. Smackdown, you about to get your shit rocked. Hip hop's the Wayne Johnson, your chicken pot pot, dude. What's your name? Swanson. I glow like Raiden, act like you know me. Bling. Ninja Gaten, I'm a black Shinobi. Ching. You a chick like Tony Braxton, homie. Performing in the precinct like Axel Foley. Same. DOC suit and a pair for tackies. When I body you and grant your mom like no backsies. Look, I'ma start a massacre. Fuck America, call me Captain Africa. Elephant back, I rose like Hannibal. Rap cannibal with that steel, George the animal. Why? I start spraying so pale. Come through with that iron man like an agent of shield. I ain't nothing to up with. Grease ball, man, I ain't nothing to up with. I'm a grease ball, man, I ain't nothing to up with. Grease ball, man, I ain't nothing to up with. Yo, I ain't nothing to up with. Grease ball, man, I ain't nothing to up with. Grease ball, man, I ain't nothing to up with. I'm a grease ball, man, I ain't nothing to up with. Yo, you get long kissed on the song, bitch. Or you'll feel the smoke in your chest like a bong hit. Real strong shit, y'all can pass it around. I pull a real long fifth and blast it a clown. Come on, grease ball greasy. I'm the baddest dog on it. I'm a dick, take a beat and rub my balls on it. Act like y'all want it. You can, in fact, have it. You'll disappear. No tricks. I spit black magic. Ah, damn right, it's that tragic. I'm a breath of fresh air. Rap made y'all asthmatics. Breathe like fab, y'all sounding all wheezy. I'm a grease ball dog. I keep it all greasy. The rootiness, sootiness, roughness. Toughness, big birds like you get snuffle up again. Mind your beeswax, for I have to biz nuts your shit. One man who ain't playing nothing to fuck with, bitch. I ain't nothing to up with. Grease ball, man, I ain't nothing to up with. I'm a grease ball, man, I ain't nothing to up with. Grease ball, man, I ain't nothing to up with. Yo, I ain't nothing to up with. Grease ball, man, I ain't nothing to up with. Grease ball, man, I ain't nothing to up with. I'm a grease ball, man, I ain't nothing to up with. Flow fresh like it's kept in zip lock. Wow. Smackdown, you about to get your shit rocked. Hip hop's the Wayne Johnson, your chicken pot pot, dude. What's your name? Swanson, I glow like Raven, act like you know me. Bling. Ninja Gaten, I'm a black Shinobi. Ching. You a chick like Tony Braxton, homie. Performing in the precinct like Axel Foley. Same. DOC suit and a pair for tackies. When I body you and grant your mom like no backsies. Look, I'ma start a massacre. Fuck America, call me Captain Africa. Elephant back, I rose like Hannibal. Rap cannibal with that steel, George the animal. Why? I start spraying so pale. Come through with that iron man like an agent of shield. I ain't nothing to up with. Grease ball, man, I ain't nothing to up with. I'm a grease ball, man, I ain't nothing to up with. Grease ball, man, I ain't nothing to up with. Yo, I ain't nothing to up with. Grease ball, man, I ain't nothing to up with. Grease ball.